Hello, everyone. Dr. Yonit Arthur here. You are on The Steady Coach. And in today's unedited video as part of the Ask Dr. Yo series, I'm going to answer one of the most popular questions here on my channel. And that question is, Dr. Yo, which exercise should I do to resolve this particular symptom? And you can fill in the blank with whichever symptom you'd like. It could be rocking or bobbing or swaying. It could be visual symptoms or visual delay. It could be head heaviness. It could be neck tension and tightness. It could be trampoline walking. It could be dissociation or derealization, any of those things and more. People ask me this all the time and I decided it was finally time to just make a video about it so I can answer and put this to rest once and for all. So the caveat here is I'm speaking specifically to people with neural circuit dizziness. So if you are new to my channel and you don't know if you have neural circuit dizziness, I would highly suggest you watch the video that I linked to in the video description below, because if you have a medical cause of your dizziness and the symptoms that you have are medically explained, then vestibular rehab exercises are an excellent way to resolve your symptoms. And I don't want you to listen to what I'm saying in this video and think I'm saying, oh, don't do vestibular rehab. Okay. So if you have medically explained dizziness, then this video may not be for you. If you have neural circuit dizziness, AKA you have PPPD or 3PD, you have MDDS, you have vestibular migraine, you have cervicogenic dizziness, you have prolonged post-concussion syndrome without a clear physical cause causing your symptoms, or you have unilateral hypofunction, AKA you have a weakness on one side, but you've never compensated for it despite having gone through vestibular therapy or after a prolonged period of time. So those are the main folks who fall into this neural circuit dizziness category, then this video is for you. So the answer to the question of which vestibular rehab exercise should I do to fix my symptom is likely, probably not a single vestibular rehab exercise. And I know that may come as a shock to some of you, and it actually comes as a shock to me too, to hear myself say this, considering I have years and years of training in vestibular rehabilitation. So again, I don't say this lightly, and I'm not saying that vestibular rehabilitation isn't effective for what its intended use is. is. But for those of you with neural circuit dizziness, focusing on exercises to fix a single particular symptom is actually mostly not helpful and in some cases can be harmful. So just really good for you to know this, that none of my current clients are using vestibular rehab to get better from chronic dizziness as I'm working with them. And the vast majority of my clients do not use vestibular rehab as part of their chronic dizziness recovery. Some of them did find vestibular rehab helpful, particularly in addressing the fear surrounding movement. So the one time that I find vestibular rehab really helpful is if someone has a lot of fear around movement and I need to find a way to systematically progress the person back to actually moving again. So it can be really, really helpful for those things. And I have had some clients also use vestibular rehab as a nervous system training exercise where they're purposely bringing on symptoms and then bringing them back down using somatic tracking or parasympathetic breathing and in that way, they're training their brains to understand that the symptoms and movement are not dangerous. So those are the times when it's helpful. But when you're thinking about vestibular rehab exercises as a way to fix a particular neural circuit symptom, it can totally backfire. And that's, again, why I almost never use it with my clients. Reason number one why it often backfires is that really doing vestibular rehab exercises when you have a body and brain that are healthy and whole and they're just making a mistake is reinforcing this idea that there's something physically wrong with you. And I know that that may not seem like a big deal, but it is because danger mode is the driving force behind this whole symptom complex. So anything that you do that reinforces that there's something actually wrong with you can potentially set you back. It could potentially turn the volume up on danger mode and therefore turn the volume dial up on symptoms. The second thing, and this is closely related, is it increases your attention on symptoms. Also not a great idea when the driving force behind neural circuit symptoms is both fear and danger mode and attention. 
the more time you spend obsessing about or trying to fix a particular symptom with a particular exercise, the more you're actually giving your brain exactly the opposite of the message you want to give your brain, which is this isn't important brain. You can let this go. You can let this symptom fade into the background. I don't need to know about it. When you're doing an exercise over and over, oh my gosh, I got to get rid of this visual delay over and over and over again, you're saying to your brain, this visual delay is super important brain. I want you to focus on it. I want you to sharpen it. I want you to turn that volume dial up every time it happens so that I know that it's there. Not again, conducive to healing from chronic dizziness symptoms. And the last thing, the last reason why it can be detrimental is it draws your attention away from the things that actually do matter for chronic dizziness recovery. And for many of you on my channel, you've heard me say this, it can be really hard to believe me at first, so it's okay if you don't fully believe me right now. But again, this is based on my experience and the experience of literally hundreds of people who've passed through my membership community and hundreds of my own personal clients who I've worked with. It's not about the exercises. It's about what's causing danger mode to stay on in the first place. So we can do exercises over and over again and tell the brain your symptoms are safe and your movement is safe. But if we're not addressing the root cause of why your brain thinks everything is a threat, then we're missing a huge opportunity here and we're wasting our time doing exercises when we could be directly addressing threat mode. And threat mode or danger mode can be addressed in different ways. It can be addressed in bottom-up ways, so in ways that help calm your nervous system through breathing and other uh, relaxation techniques. And I also want to emphasize here that, again, while I talk about those things a lot on my channel, from my perspective as a practitioner who works with people directly, obviously, that stuff is helpful, but it is equally important to look at the top-down stuff. In other words, the emotional and uh, social and psychological components that led to danger mode in the first place. For many of you, that is really the central thing driving this. And what I see over and over again, especially in the membership community where I really get to know people over time, people start to see this and then they can't unsee it. And they're like, oh my gosh, Yoni, you're so you're right. This actually is what's driving my symptoms. Things that they would previously attribute to some kind of physical trigger, like, oh, I went outside and I was really tired that day and that's why I had symptoms. They realize, oh, actually, I had a fight with my mom that morning. That's why my symptoms went up the way they did. So again, I'm not saying that there isn't a reality of physical triggers for symptoms, not at all. But what I'm saying is that when you're spending all of your time focusing on physical causes of triggers and physical exercises to resolve your symptoms, you are not addressing the emotional and actual danger mode nervous system factors that are leading to the chronic symptoms in the first place. So your time is better spent directly addressing those things rather than focusing on symptoms alone. So I hope that that clarifies my message here. And I know, again, it may be a strange one for those of you who are new to my channel. So I invite you to look at many of my other videos. Again, not saying exercise or movement is bad. On the contrary, it is one of the primary pillars of recovery. We've got to move. But moving should be something that you're doing. It shouldn't be something that you're doing to combat a particular symptom, because when you do that, you are in danger of falling into one of those three pitfalls that we just talked about. So questions, comments, drop them below. If you found this helpful, please like, share, subscribe to my channel. It helps me reach more people. Thanks, everyone.